Hey, and welcome to the Formula Drift Halftime Show brought to you by AM Intakes. My name is Sam Nalvin. I'm Buckle. And instead of uh, Corey Hosford, our other host, we actually have someone filling in for him. It is Mr. Chelsea Denofa, Formula Drift driver, RTR Mustang. He is with us in this tower. And Chelsea, why are you with us today? It's kind of unfortunate for you. It is unfortunate. Uh, we were doing really, really well out there. And then uh, during qualifying, we just had a little bit of a mechanical situation and uh, we weren't able to proceed past qualifying but uh, we got some points on the board and we'll be ready for Atlanta yeah well we're very happy to have you up here and give us that driver's insight um, and <laughs> you those are mechanical <laughs> yeah, yeah right right mechanical. Oh, so that's not the mechanical issue we just saw you uh, had that a little incident before qualifying yeah, unfortunately that was me trying to put my 100 point qualifying run and as you can see I scored 107 <laughs> yeah but that was before qualifying started so you kind of uh, unfortunately yeah yeah <laughs> but you, you, you threw down a qualifying run but unfortunately you had a technical and uh, are up here in the tower with us instead of down there for the top 16. But once again, we're happy to have your insight. So first, let's talk about this track because I feel like a lot of people don't think this track is that technical uh, just because it kind of is a figure eight, a pretty standard drift layout. People learn how to drift in a figure eight in a parking lot, but this is not a parking lot. It is something a little more dangerous. No, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a wild track. I've been driving this track for 13 years, so I'm kind of a bummer that I'm not driving right now. Uh, but yeah, you look at it and you say, oh, it's just two turns. But the reality of it is, the track is not super technical, but the bank ride is dangerous, and the driving of it is very technical because yeah. you have to set your car up to work well on a left and right turn bias track, and as well as keep your tires lasting and your car lasting for those entire very long two sweepers. And not to mention the jumps, of course. You've got not one, but you know, coming off the bank crazy in the middle. transition on that bump zone right there. So yep. how you manage to control the car after going to such a bumpy road? Yeah, for me, I just kind of pick my point on the track, set it, use the bump to plant the car, and drive right off of it. Yeah. So I think a lot of the guys out here have kind of figured that out this year, and uh, the cars look a lot better this year, everybody. Yeah, everyone Sweet. was looking very smooth. Uh, but let's talk about our top 32. So we had a lot of runs that were unfortunately not completed due to mechanicals, such as yours, unfortunately. But there was our, our normal buy runs for the top two qualifiers. Um, the top qualifier, of course, was Osbo. So let's actually talk about qualifying for a second. Osbo got one of the highest qualifying scores we've ever seen in Formula Drift. That's 99 points. 99 points. The Unicorn 100 is still it's not showing himself there. in a long time. I know. But I had a 98 for a while holding there, and then he just <laughs> beat me by that one point. Yeah. And uh, so this run was really incredible by Osbo. And one thing we, we've noticed in, in looking at his car especially is that it has no end on the car. So it's, it's really tough to tell compared yeah. to other cars when that's, he's hitting points. That's it, what I think. Like, uh, a lot of people maybe don't see that the car is going at full angle because the car is so round. It's almost like a beetle. Yep, it's short, So it, it's hard to tell when it's really putting a lot of angles. I, I think that's why a lot of people were complaining. They were saying that the, the score was a little too high. But then we have James Dean, who did a 96. 97, I believe. 97. So he was, he was right behind um, James Dean, always looking great. He, unfortunately... Did not make it all the way to the top in uh, Long Beach, and then that was kind of a weird thing to see him get out early with a mechanical. But he's just back out here, ready to party. His car was looking dialed, as those, SV as those S15s always do on this course and pretty much any course. But yeah, James Dean is looking strong. But let's talk about some battles. Uh, right off the bat, we had Essa and Van Kirk after Osbo's buy run. And that one, unfortunately, didn't go very long because Essa did what we all fear. And Chelsea, I think you've done it before, is you crash right before your battle. That's yep. the very last practice. So it last, last few runs in practice crashed. And then, unfortunately, uh, looked like the car just wasn't ready to roll into the battle. What other uh, battles stood out to you, Paco? Uh, definitely the, one, me, uh, the Alec Honadel versus Jonathan Castro. It, same thing, like Hanadel uh, did just one run. He debuted a tire, unfortunately. He debuted a tire, unfortunately, which is crazy because that automatically means he can't come back. Right. When you think about the impact that having to change a tire has on the show, because then the other driver then gets to change a tire, and it just takes it takes a long time for the show. So I get why they don't they don't want to have that rule. Chelsea, you've also dealt with debating, and I've seen you even keep driving after <laughs> debating some tires. Many times. But yeah, I mean that's that's just one thing that uh, is 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 I think necessary for the run of the show. So it's unfortunate to see him out. But uh, Castro was very strong last year and he actually beat uh, James Dean, who was at that point unstoppable. So Castro is going to be someone to watch today. And then, of course, we have Forsberg and Gittin, which had a weird start to it. Uh, Forsberg <laughs> knocked a cone, and then he got punted by Chelsea's uh, fellow driver there, Vaughn, yeah. which, you know, it looks, it looks unfortunate that you can't really come to a stop there quick. I think Chris said he did hit brakes just a little bit, but... If you are driving full speed and don't initiate drift there, you are going to go into the wall. Cause well, yeah, yeah, for sure. And unfortunately, that is the spot in the chase position where you are saying, no matter what they do, I am flat and I'm driving up to their door Yeah, right at that spot where he hit the brakes. Yeah. So it was definitely, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's uh, 
unfortunate, but I definitely can see how that happened. An inter interesting note as well is that uh, both Chris and Vaughn were here super late last night trying to sort out their cars, so they were actually some of the last people at the track just trying to make the, the show today, and, and thankfully yep. both of them were there. Um, then we have... Should we go through the best battle? Yeah, let's let's do the uh, next entire moment. This is our favorite battle, or something that's very notable for us. This is the Dean Carney versus uh, Alec Helbrun. Alex Helbrun Alex moment, Hilbrun. which is uh, very cool because Dean has a bit of a story in that in Long Beach he wasn't uh, driving because he had motor issues, so he came back strong here. And he had probably the best chase. Maybe maybe uh, Peter Beats had a really good chase as well. But it was his insane. Was but even about, like even how Alex Hilburn, how he initiated like just next to him, it's almost like initiated in front of him. For but it was looking like like you can see right here. Like he just went right into oh, him. Man. Yeah. <laughs> then there was a little bit of, se of separation, but then he came back at it again. Uh, very strong, very close. But when Kearney came back following Alex, it was just probably one of the most insane uh, chases we've seen doing in that Viper. Yeah, absolutely. And then to uh, to top it all off, at the end of the run, it looked like there was some sort of fire underneath his hood. Hopefully his car is okay <laughs> oh, wow. for uh, 16 here. But yeah, look at that chase right now on, on screen. On that's, that's wild. So. <laughs> Speaking of fires, uh, we saw Federico Sarifo pulling a little bit of a backfire yeah. for a moment on I bet I cringe like oh. we, our hearts stop for a second anytime we see a uh, flame next to that car but yeah as we see <laughs> as we see Carney uh, uh, finishing out that run with uh, Hellbrun is just very very awesome follow yeah. and I'm excited and to see Carney ended him. up moving on yeah so we're excited to see him go on uh, Turk and Kuge one of the battles that we, we didn't get to see just due to unfortunate technical things and then uh, Blush and uh, Taguchi was cool Taguchi we got to see some solid driving out of and Blush did what would probably be a high 90s uh, lead run if it were a qualifying. So nice. he's going to be someone to contend with here as well. So Taguchi is running 21-inch wheels. Yeah, which is, is that bling or what? Oh, I mean, the <laughs> Skylight, the GTR has come factory with big wheels. Yeah. So I feel like if you put tiny wheels on that, it's going to look a little bit weird. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I don't know, but like just going against Blues, I mean, that car also looks so massive and so planted. It was a good battle. I mean, I'm really, really excited about, about Taguchi. It look, looks like he's definitely dialing it in. It's looking good. Yeah, definitely. What uh, what size are your wheels on your Mustang, Chelsea? Uh, they're 18 by nine and a half. How does that feel for you? Would you would you rather have like 21s on there, just some bling? Nah, as long as the diameter of the actual tire is good, technically speaking, that's that's where we're at. Yeah. You, you need more style points. We, we, we just put car feelers on Taylor Hall's Cadillac. There you go. Yeah. So that's he's perfect. gonna get the new style points, <laughs> <laughs> just because of the decoration. So. What does your Mustang feel like at this track compared to like driving, you know, your past car, the BMW? Is it harder? Is it more on edge? What's that, what's it like for you? It feels uh, pretty much the same, to be honest with you, at this track, because yeah. there's only like two pivot points. Uh, so basically, you know, that car, the more throttle you give it, the faster it goes, the more grip it can make, and uh, that's similar to how my previous cars were. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, through the, the center section of the track, the Mustang soaks up the bumps a little bit better than my BMW did. Yeah, lifts them. If you only have three wheels on the ground, you know, you can't be affected by. Well, the there's at times when we have none on the ground <laughs> here know. sometimes. Yeah, like if you go offline, you could definitely go four in the air. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I think I got a shot of one of you guys flying over the uh, the hill crest there. Yeah. So if you were in the show in 32, you would have ran against Wang, who yep. uh, is coming back very strong. Uh, what is your strategy for driving against a guy like Forrest? Well, we know he's going to do big angle, sweepy transitions, and that's uh, great for a qualifying run and great for a follow run because you can dive in and get where you need to. Yeah. Um, overall, just uh, we would have had to put some good grip in the car and drive it uh, pretty much on edge to keep up. And uh, I think we could have had him though for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's let's talk for another minute about just the track itself. So, what do you, as a driver, what are you encountering when you get off that bank and go into the middle section with a transition? Like, what are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your feet? How do you fight that? Yeah. So when you're coming through that outer zone, uh, filling the zone and coming off, you're immediately looking ahead at that inner clip. You know, picking up where you're at. And how you get to that clip is what dictates what your car is going to do, because there's quite a bit of a difference between just three feet of the transition. If you get it right for your particular car, you know, you pick up that inner clip transition. The next thing you're doing is looking straight at that next clip. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just got to get wide, pick that up, and get yourself a good drive into the last outer zone. Yeah, so you let go of the wheel and kind of uh, catch it at the exact perfect yeah, point. I Hopefully mean, not get lost in the smoke, as we saw a couple people do, Yeah, the only time you're really wheeling the car is getting it off the bank, because you are going from such a high speed and such a very close to the wall, so you can't adjust backwards. You can only adjust forwards. Definitely. So, you know, getting that uh, timing right Banks kind of, like, naturally try to pull you up into the bank, right? Yeah, when you lift, you go up on the bank here. So never lift then. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I right. lifted in practice. <laughs> we're going to go to a uh, <laughs> quick commercial break, and then after that, we're going to be doing our uh, top 16 uh, discussion, as well as our Motegi racing predictions, all that and more after a quick break.
All right, we are back with the Form of the Drift Halftime Show brought to you by AEM Intakes. I'm Sam Nalvin, seated with uh, Paco Ibarra and Chelsea Denova, and we are now going to discuss the top 16 battles we have coming up. Uh, top 32, I don't want to say it wasn't exciting. It was a very exciting top 32, but I'm really excited about the 16 coming up. Uh, first off the bat, we're going to have Osbo and Van Kirk, and this is kind of exciting. Van Kirk is new to Pro 1. Osbo right now, the leader. Van Kirk uh, talked to Lorette earlier, and Lorette told us that he is super excited to go against Osbo because that's kind of his hero. That's his yeah. idol. And it's one of those cool stories of, you know, you start. He was, was so excited. He was trying to pull the microphone. From <laughs> so that. That was pretty good. That. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be an exciting battle. Osbo, uh, I think, has a bit of an advantage there just being Osbo. Yeah. But, but we have the battle that everybody's been wanting for a while. Yeah. So on the other end of the it bracket, finally happened. We, we mentioned during our Long Beach show that inevitably we imagine we're going to see Dean yeah. versus Wang. Very aggressive driving styles, yeah. very aggressive cars, and we're finally going to see that. Yep. I think that's probably what most people are excited about. Yeah. I Thanks to Chelsea here. I, he I, made that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. Yeah, I talked, welcome, to, I talked to Nick Dizon <laughs> from Get Nuts. He was saying that Wang is actually super excited for this battle. Like, yeah. It's like something he's been looking for. I, I'm sure like it doesn't matter who's going to win. I'm sure he's going to have a great yeah. time. And it's going to be an eye, like eye candy for everybody. Yeah, for I, sure. mean, I mean, it's going to be a style fest, a speed fest, two of the best looking uh, S chassis out there. And then back on the other side of the bracket, we have Gucci versus Dai. I'm always excited to see the uh, GT86 and BRZs battle each other because they drive such similar styles. Uh, you know, they're similar cars, similar builds, but very different motor packages. And it's going to be an interesting battle for sure. Um, we then have uh, flopping to the other side of the bracket. We have the frenemies, Odie yep. and Fields. What do you think about that, Chelsea? I think it'll be a good battle. Yeah. yeah. Um, I unfortunately have not seen a ton of the driving out here, but yeah. knowing them and their characteristics, it's going to be a big ego battle there. <laughs> <laughs> ego battle. And what do you have you have you had the pleasure of following Field or driving with Field? And I have new not Corvette? here, but yeah. uh, in uh, Long Beach I did, and that car seems pretty balanced. Yeah. And yeah. He's uh, figuring it out. Seems like it's a little much for him, and he's trying to uh, get on the same level as the car, which is yeah. something that a driver would love to hear, you yeah. know, so. It kind of reminds me of you out there. Like, I can tell that when he's on, he's on, but it's like you're kind of on uh, a razor. You know, if you, if you go a little bit too far in one direction, the car is not forgive you. But either way, uh, it's going to be an exciting battle. Other end of the bracket, we have uh, Peter, Peter Vitek versus and Dirk, uh, Stratton. Dirk Stratton. So more Corvette action, yeah. more S15 action. I think Dirk is looking very, very strong. He's his battle against uh, against uh, Matt Kaufman. That was a one more time battle, by the way. Right. And they both did amazing. Yeah, if Kaufman it, unfortunately looked like he got lost in the smoke. But. Yeah. And then he did a little uh, wall tap on his second, uh, his one more time race. But Dirk was looking extremely solid. Yeah. And I think. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, battle to watch, for and sure. And Peter coming off of not only a very successful Long Beach, but also that he won both days of the uh, Motegi Super Drift. Double which win. Is, which is on one right now. For he qualified sure. very high, and uh, he's, he's definitely going to be someone to watch. And then we have, on the other side of the bracket again, JTP and Carney. Carney was uh, our favorite battle earlier, and JTP qualified super high and looks Third. like he's on one as well. This is going to be an insane battle. Yeah. Both of these cars, big, uh, big cars, and they, they know how to handle. Yeah. And then we'll do back, back to the other side, Castro and Forsberg. Yeah. So have, like all teammates going back uh, at each other. And Castro, like we said earlier, he beat Dean here last year, yep. which was which was quite a sight to see. He's looking he was, very good. He was, as you would say, on one. He was on one that <laughs> day. And uh, Forsberg uh, had a good battle with Vaughn. He was uh, chasing engine issues, but it looks like those are figured out. I think it's going to be a good battle. Former teammates always make good battles, so we're excited for that one. Yep. And then uh, the other Finally. end, we have uh, Turk and Blush, which <laughs> I think is going to be insane because that's going to be a good one. Everything can happen in that one. Yeah, anything can happen with that one. Blush has been driving like a madman. Turk always seems to drive like a madman, especially here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like the, every battle is going to be a very good one. There's not one that like I can just hands down say is going to be. Oh, it's going to go this way or that way. It's going to yeah, be. Yeah, there's wild. a lot of battles of bros as well. So bro battles. <laughs> yeah, those bro are the battles. best ones because because they probably drive with each other more than anyone yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. You know they're going to go and harder. And they're comfortable. And, they're, and that's the most important thing, especially For sure. like we saw with Vaughn and Forsberg, is that you know. He, the only reason Vaughn kind of punted Forsberg is because he was an inch off his bumper. Right. And you're so comfortable with that guy that you know he's going to be doing everything he can to uh, make it around that course. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's talk about who we think is going to end up on the top tonight. All right. Which will be I've our got my uh, picks right here. Dude, these are our Motegi racing predictions for the podium picks. I guess, uh, you know, let's start with Paco. Paco. Let's start with me. So these are, these are our hypotheticals. These are our filling out our kind of what we think is going to happen for these top 16 and beyond battles yeah. and who's going to be at the top. So let's go with the boat, like the you know the top four, yeah. and then who's gonna win? Yeah. So, so who's I your have top four? Osbo, Peter Vincek, Forrest Wang, and JTP. Okay, I can see so that. So 
My prediction, who's going to take this round? Yeah. Forrest Wang. Forrest Wang, okay. With a very solid Peter Vincek on second. So we're going to see a Wang Vincek battle at the very end. Yeah. And Asbo with a third. And Asbo at the third because he qualified first, but also. Yeah. But also it, otherwise, we would have been JTP. Yeah, so we see a rematch of uh, Asbo and so Peter. They're so close there. from each other. But I just, I just have a feeling. I just have a feeling that this is gonna be, this is gonna be Wang's, Wang's track. Cool. I can see that. Chelsea. Absolutely. Yeah. So my four is gonna be uh, Blues, Field, Visek, and Osbro. Osbro. <laughs> yep. And uh, in the order, I'm putting Field on the podium you at think the top. Field's gonna be I am. On, on the one. I as think said. it's gonna happen. Look at I think we're gonna see a click car. in top eight, and you're gonna see some really wild driving there. And yeah. in second, I have Visek, and third, I have Osbro. Man. Osbo to be correct. Right. So that's exciting because it seems like we all kind of have different, uh, we have different ideas here. Uh, Paco Mai is very similar. We have uh, Osbo, Vitsek, and then I have Dean and Blush. Okay. So at this point, though, I think it's anyone's game. Like, these drivers are all insane. And uh, I have Vitsek on top, actually, because mm. I think that he's just going to keep on powering through like he has been. Uh, Blush second because, once again, I think, like, these guys just have the... Uh, the Fury, their aura, their aura, Paco. What <laughs> color is their aura? Uh, everybody, uh, uh, Blues have like a very neon yellow yeah, it's aura. Very you can bright. see it from the distance, for sure. Yeah, and then uh, and then I have uh, Osbo in third because he qualified so high. But yeah, I mean. But winning. These, like we said, these 16 battles are going to be absolutely nuts, and this is one of the most exciting top 16s going into it that I think yep. have been in a long time. And uh, one of the craziest things, like look at the look at the variety of cars we have, the variety of uh, countries we have, uh, the drivers. You know, yeah. it's the teams. Like they have, we have people helping other people from other other yeah. teams, and it's. I mean, look 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 at that. It's it's just such a such a, oh, it's such a nice um, it's a diverse nice sight, field. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's, like it's a very diverse field. We have a lot of familiar faces. We have some newer faces out there. It's good to see. Some guys who, uh, this is their first time in Pro 1, and they're out there in the top 16. It's got to be For very sure. exciting to already get up there. Um, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful, what, what beautiful was afternoon. Your, what was your first top 16 like, Chelsea? Yeah. Was it here? Mm, I think it was Atlanta in 2012, my first year. Yeah. You used to stand in front of everybody. I was. I was like, oh, man, I think I made it. And then little <laughs> did I know. <laughs> little did you know. Your life that would this go. is just to get in the show. Yeah. Yep. So... And what, uh, so I always feel like the battles get crazier as time goes on. Why, I mean, do you just get excited? Do you, does your car go faster? Why do, why do battles get more exciting? Why do you get crazier as the time goes on? What goes on mentally? Well, I mean, for me, it's like, okay, we have a car, we're comfortable in it, we're turning laps, and out here we get a maximum of 12 laps before qualifying. So as we get more laps, we're obviously going to get better, refine our runs, yeah. and set the car up. And it, basically, I grow bigger balls, we put more <laughs> grip in the car, and we yeah. go faster. And uh, we know other people are going to do the same thing, so it becomes a battle of like, hey, how fast is he going to be this round? Yeah. And then we got to match that. And then everybody overdoes it by one click or one pr pound of pressure or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's very exciting. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. The weather here is nicer than I think it's ever been this for an FD Orlando. And that's so always been the humidity is low. The temperatures are 10 degrees lower than normal. How does that affect you uh, on the track, tire-wise? I mean, it's definitely a big difference. Heat is what kills tires. So having that track temp down a little bit helps a lot. And, uh, you know, smaller burnout box, more tire consumption, you know, whatever you can do to make it last. But, yeah, the, the weather has been amazing this uh, entire weekend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, we are getting very close here to our top 16 introductions. Hopefully your favorite driver is out there. Make sure to cheer for them all. And it uh, looks like yeah. we got Castro pulling Coming up on the track. Hot. Coming in hot. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> all right, who's excited about drifting? I mean, I'm a little I bit mean, excited. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, you don't, I mean, you I don't, don't usually get to watch much drifting. Because yeah. hopefully I'm still out there. Yeah. But uh, I'm actually going to sit and watch this entire top 16. I mean, so. it's bittersweet, but I mean, it's always fun to watch drifting. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, you'd rather be behind the wheel. But we're happy you're able to join us today. No Thank problem. Thank you so much for uh, yeah, taking for your spot. Thanks for having me, guys. And uh, you have just listened to another episode of the Formula Drift AM Intakes Halftime Show. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. And uh, make sure to check out our podcast, Maximum Driftcast. Check out Chelsea on the Instagram, Team yep, RTR. And YouTube as well. YouTube YouTube. YouTube. Review, video reviews and all kinds of shenanigans. That's right. There'll be one up next week of this. Sick. Right. Thanks, guys. See ya.